On January 15, 2025, Hyundai and Kia will join the growing list of OEMs whose electric vehicles now have Tesla supercharger access. Now, these are V3 and later superchargers, and the owners will need a NAX to CCS1 adapter like those that you see on the table in front of me here. This is great news for owners of these vehicles. However, I recently learned some information about Kia's plans to give their customers access to superchargers. Part of that is that they're going to be offering a free adapter to certain owners of the EVs. We'll get into that a little bit later. And honestly, I am concerned about the news that I've heard, so much so that I contacted Kia to confirm that it was actually true, and it is true. And this is what we're going to be talking about here today, so let's get into it. I've also produced videos each time a new OEM gains supercharger access to try to help customers that own those vehicles understand how you do it, what adapters to use, how you authenticate a charge on a supercharger. And I was fully prepared to produce a video on Kia and Hyundai very shortly, right around the time that they got access, which as I said, is probably about three weeks from now. However, I've been seeing some pictures circulate on the internet, which has kind of forced me to move things up a little bit, just talk about what I'm seeing and the concerns that I have. So first, let me talk about the adapters I have here on the table in front of me. This is the official Tesla adapter, the one that uh, Tesla makes themselves and provides to the OEMs. This is the Electron Vortex adapter. This is Ford's specific adapter that they contracted Electron to make. It's very similar to the Electron Vortex adapter, but it's not exactly the same. Ford made Electron make a few improvements to the design before that they felt comfortable sending it to their customers. And this is the A to Z Typhoon adapter. That's so it's called the A to Z Typhoon Pro adapter. And these adapters, I consider all to be very robust, high quality adapters. I use them all on my electric vehicles and I feel perfectly fine telling people that they can use these, that they're well engineered and well made. All of these adapters are engineered for 1000 volts and 500 amps. And that's important for today's discussion. Kia announced that they were gonna be sending free adapters as Ford did, as Rivian did to their customers. And Kia said that they're gonna be sending free adapters to their EV6 and EV9 customers that purchased a new electric vehicle, not used, between uh, September 4th and January 2nd. I believe after the 2nd, they're just gonna include it with the vehicle, but I don't have complete clarity on that just yet. Uh, so if you have purchased a Kia EV6 or EV9 after September 4th, uh, and between September 4th and January 2nd, you're, go you're eligible to get a free adapter from Kia. Unfortunately, Nero EV customers are kind of like orphans here, and Kia decided that uh, you don't deserve a free adapter because you bought their lowest cost EV. Um, a little disappointed in that. I don't feel like they should leave out any of their customers. I understand the date, the September, the September 4th date, you know, they can't backdate it too far. But uh, to just leave Nero EV customers out in the cold, I, I, I'd be pretty upset if I purchased a new Nero EV from them. But anyway, I digress. So they're going to give them a free adapter. Great. You know, Ford's done it. Rivian's done it. I've talked about the free adapter things before. I don't love um, completely free. Uh, what I would prefer that Ford and Rivian had done would have been to charge customers just like a, a very small, say, shipping and handling fee, $9.99, $14.99, so really small amount of money. But what that does is it eliminates people from accepting it that really don't need it or don't want it because we saw what happened with Ford. They couldn't produce enough of them. They couldn't get enough of them from Tesla. So they had to co-engineer one with Electron and now their customers are, are all being fulfilled. But so many people had to wait like 10 months because they couldn't get enough of them because Ford just sent them out to everyone. A lot of these people 
didn't want one, didn't need one. And then they turned around and put them on eBay or um, sold them online because, hey, you know, Ford gave it to me for free. I don't need it, so I'll sell it. Well, I don't blame people for doing that at all. Uh, I like the fact that uh, the OEMs are offering them for free, but I think there should be some sort of small fee attached to it, shipping and handling, because what that does is it weeds out the people that really don't want it or need it. Anyway, that's relevant to this conversation because Kia is going to be giving away free adapters to their EV6 and EV9 customers that purchased them within that date. However, the adapter that they're going to be giving out, they have uh, it's not an existing adapter that's on the market. They used one of their contract manufacturers. I think you pronounce it a company, Kyungshin. It's a Korean company. And they make things for uh, Hyundai, Kia. So they're making this adapter for Kia to give out. It's not available. You can't buy it online anywhere. I believe they're just making it for Kia for, for this program. At least now, maybe in the future, you'll see them for sale. However, the adapter is rated for 1,000 volts but only 350 amps. Now it's not a problem with Kia's vehicles because with the eGMP platform that has a very high voltage, the battery packs, the amperage draw is very low. It's under 350 amps. So it's no problem if you're using this with your EV6 or EV9, it, the vehicle can't draw more amps than that. However, there's a couple of problems here. Number one, uh, if somebody owns a Kia EV6 or EV9 gets this adapter free, and they also own another electric vehicle, say Chevrolet Equinox, like I own. And they say, well, I don't need to buy two adapters. They're giving me one for free. I'll just use it for both cars. Therein lies the problem. My Chevrolet Equinox will pull up to 500 amps, and it will pull more than 350 amps for up to 17 or 18 minutes continuously. Now, this adapter that they are going to be giving out does have internal heat sensors. It will shut off charging if it reaches those heat sensors, provided it's working properly and they haven't burned out or anything like that. So it'll just shut off charging. So, you know, let's say I have the EV6 and I got, I got my free adapter and then I bought an Equinox and I start charging, it just shuts off. I'm gonna be confused as to what's going on here. Most people aren't that savvy to really understand that, you know, the amperage and volts and stuff like this. This is, EV charging's new to 99% of the people that have an EV. So they really don't understand this. Now, uh, Kia, I understand, can say, well, listen, this is made for our vehicles. We tell our customers only use them on our vehicles. That's great, you can tell people whatever they want. That doesn't mean that's gonna happen. Now, here's another problem that I see with this. Since they're just sending them out to everybody, a lot of people that get them that don't need them because believe it or not, there's a lot of people that own EVs that never use DC fast charging. They just charge their vehicle at home. They don't use it for long road trips. They have no need for a NAX adapter. So they're gonna go on eBay. They're gonna list this thing online somewhere. They're gonna sell it. And the person that buys it just looks NAX adapter, you know, charge your non-Tesla vehicle on a Tesla supercharger. And they can own an EV that has a 400 volt battery system that's gonna draw more than 350 amps continuously. And there's gonna be a problem. It's not gonna, at the very least, it won't charge their car properly. You know, at the very worst, there could be real problems. So um, I just think it's very short-sighted of Kia to do this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Hyundai and Kia, what they've been doing with their electric vehicle programs. I think they're at the, the, the top of the list for me. I mean, I won't say the top, but top, you know, couple automakers. I think they're doing a wonderful job in this, you know, EV revolution, whatever you want to call it, as we transition from combustion to electric vehicles. Hyundai and Kia, uh, 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 to me, get an A so far for what they've been doing with their vehicles and their future um, product planning that that's going to be coming down the pipeline. This is, a, in my opinion, a terrible move by Kia. So this video was sponsored by Qmerit, North America's premier installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have Qmerit install it. And if you follow that link, Qmerit will waive the $150 installation deposit. But in order to have the deposit waived, you must follow the link in the description of my videos. I talked to them briefly about it. I'm gonna have more conversations hopefully soon and get some more information and maybe get official statements from Kia on, on, on this whole um, problem. But uh, to me, you know, um, 
I really, I don't understand why they would put out an adapter that could potentially give customers problems. Now, I know it's not going to give their customers problems, but they have to understand that people are going to use these on multiple vehicles. And um, like I said, it's the fact that they're just sending them out for free, a lot of people are going to get these and then just flip them and say, you know what, they're sending it to me for free. Um, you know, I'm, I might as well just take it and then I'll sell it to somebody. And, uh, you know, the, uh, are they going to sell it with a caveat that says, I'm only going to sell this to people whose EVs don't draw more than 350 amps? Most electric vehicles today pull more than 350 amps when they're DC fast charging. Now, the 800 volt systems don't have to because they have that higher voltage. So the Kia and, and Hyundai Group's eGMP platforms have that 800 volt system and they don't need to draw more than 350 amps to charge at a very high rate, but very few EVs today have 800 volt systems. As I mentioned, my, uh, my Equinox EV will pull 500 amps for about 10 minutes, and then it gradually slows down, and it's not under 350 amps till 16 or 17 minutes of charging. Is that gonna be enough to trigger the uh, overheating s s switch and shut charging off? I don't know, I'm gonna have to test it out. Um, you know, will, will continuous use uh, and, and triggering that uh, the, the heat sensor to shut off end up, you know, wearing it out and then it, it, it doesn't shut off charging anymore? Will Tesla have a problem with this, with, with Kia um, giving its customers an adapter that could potentially have problems with other electric vehicles? There's a lot of questions here. So I'm, I'm hoping to get uh, a Kia representative on at some point uh, to talk about it. Now, I do know that this adapter is CSA Group certified. So it has been tested by a recognized national testing lab. So the, 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 the unit is engineered fine and, and should work properly. It should shut off charging if it overheats. Now, I will mention that it doesn't mean that uh, it can't handle more than 350 amps. All these adapters are engineered to exceed their quote unquote limit. That's the limit that it's, a, it's supposed to be able to handle continuously. Uh, I talked to both Lectron and A to Z uh, about their adapters, their 500 amp uh, adapters, and they both said that their adapters can accept more amperage for a short period of time before it hits thermal sensors and shuts down charging. So. I don't know, can this adapter handle, you know, 500 amps for 10 minutes? It, or will it get too hot? You know, will, will it, can, can it handle it in the winter when like today, for instance, it's three degrees here in New Jersey? Will that keep it nice and cool? But in the summer, if I were to use it when it's 100 degrees, it'll shut off in five minutes. There's a lot of questions here, but, um, you know, I, I just think it's really short-sighted. All of the other manufacturers are recommending their customers use these 500 amp uh, NACS to CCS1 adapters, but uh, Kia uh, engineered this adapter specifically for its vehicles. So my recommendation is going to be, uh, if, if they're going to offer you a free adapter, you might as well take it. You know, free is fine. I'm, I'm not telling people not to take it. But the Kia owners, the Kia EV owners that don't get the free adapter, let's say you have a Nero EV or you purchased an EV6 or an EV9 before September 4th, don't buy the Kia adapter. Uh, it's going to be available at dealerships for $244. And the part number is ARSND-916B4DIO. That's the part number. You can look it up uh, from the Kia parts list and it's $244. There are uh, better adapters on the market today that cost less. The Electron, Vortex, the A to Z Typhoon Pro, you can have both of these for under $200. And if you use the state of charge coupon code, you even get a further discount on them. I, I think they're uh, my coupon code is active on both of these right now. I'm not sure. They kind of activate the coupon code, then take it down, then put it back up. But try them both out. And um, you, know, you might even be able to get them for like $170. They're actually better engineered uh, adapters, and they're going to cost you like 50 or $60 less. Uh, so, you know, that would be my recommendation. If they're going to give it to you for free, that's fine. Take it for free, but please only use it on your Kia electric vehicle, or if you have another electric vehicle, make sure you know how much amps it's going to pull. You don't want to really continuously overdraw the adapter's limit. Um, you know, I hope uh, Kia honestly 
reconsiders this. It's probably a little bit too late now. They're going to be shipping these uh, adapters out within the next couple of weeks. So I'm sure they already have them here, at least a, an enormous first batch of them. But I'd love to see Kia consider changing this and, and, and having it re-engineered to, to 500 amps. I'd also like to see them charge a small fee, like I said earlier, $9, $9.99, $10, dollars something like that. And that way, only the customers that really want the adapter will take it. Uh, and, and they won't get a whole bunch of people just saying, yeah, give it to me, and then flipping them and selling them online. That's what I'm really worried about, more so than the Hyundai uh, owner using it and then using it on another vehicle. Because Hyundai, I, I would hope, I said Hyundai, Kia is what I'm talking about here. I would hope Kia includes uh, an information sheet that explains amps and how this works and that your vehicles uh, have a lower amperage than what some of the other electric vehicles on the market have. So you really only want to use this with your Kia electric vehicle. You don't want to use it on another electric vehicle unless you know what the amperage it pulls on DC fast charging. The interesting thing is when you charge your electric vehicle on AC home charging, most EVs allow you to lower the amperage that you charge your EV at. You can set it on the infotainment system. If, even if the vehicle can accept 48 amps, you can dial it down to 24 amps. A lot of people do this with home charging. Uh, it's actually a little bit kinder on the battery to charge a little bit slower. But no EV that I know of allows you to lower the amp draw on DC fast charging. And that's not surprising because with DC fast charging, the whole point of it is to charge as quickly as possible. I can't imagine somebody wanting to dial down their charging rate so they could stay at the DC fast charger longer. And could you imagine how mad somebody else would be if they're waiting for that station only to find out that the owner of the vehicle in front of them that's currently charging lowered their charging amperage for whatever reason and now they have to wait longer before they can get to that station so um, that's not going to happen i don't think we're going to see evs with the ability to lower their dc fast charging speed like you can with ac charging okay so this is not the last you're going to hear about this topic as i mentioned earlier i'm going to talk to kia representatives soon i'm going to get some answers answers about this, um, hopefully get some uh, statements on the record about the fact that, you know, they are going to be handing out an adapter that is really specifically made for their vehicles. And uh, hopefully they're going to uh, communicate to their customers that they probably shouldn't be using this on other electric vehicles because uh, those vehicles uh, may not be compatible. I mean, they're compatible, they'll work, but they may draw more current than the adapter was designed to provide. Okay, before we take off, uh, this is the holiday season, and I wanted to say hello to four of my youngest followers up in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Hello, Preston, Parker, Spencer, and Carter. I wanna thank you all for being very loyal State of Charge fans. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And I'd like to wish everybody watching this video a very happy holiday season and a safe and healthy 2025. Thanks for watching.